revealed that most choristers were infected outside of singing rehearsals or services. Infection was found up to two days before practices, and the authors concluded choir singing was unfairly blamed for infection, and the subsequent 18-month ban was therefore unjustified. Joining me now is the Reverend Dr. Jamie Franklin, curator of St. George in the Meadow, and the Reverend Canon Tim Alban jones Canon Pastor and Vice Dean of Peterborough. Thank you both very much for joining me on one of your busiest days of the week, I'm sure. Uh, Father Jamie, I'll start with you if you don't mind. Following this report, do you think it was wrong to stop the church choirs from singing during the pandemic? Thanks, Gavin. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. I think that this is another instance um, of um, tyranny in the name of science and um, these supposedly unassailable scientific consensuses should have been interrogated more thoroughly than they were. When you read the report, it really seems that this is based on this, especially the singing band, but also the indoor gatherings. This was really based on on very little in terms of this um, scientific paper, uh, which, uh, according to a, a fairly um, rigorous but also straightforward analysis, turns out to be um, unreliable. So, yeah, of course, of course, it was unjustified. And, you know, from a theological perspective, I think we also want to say that um, God has made us uh, with with voices, with the capacity to sing, to worship and praise him. He's given us uh, a book full of songs in, in the Psalms and scripture. And uh, we shouldn't have given that up so easily. We should have interrogated the reasons for it and we should have applied some kind of theological perspective to it as well. So, okay. so there's, a, there's a debate to be had about whether it's unreliable or if it's just being questioned. But did the ban lead to modern day witch hunts for choir singers? And I'll, I'll come to you in a minute, Canon Tim, but Father uh, Jamie, if you could answer that one. Well, yeah, uh, well, I don't know about, I don't know if I'd use the phrase modern day uh, witch hunts, but I've certainly, uh, through, um, through our podcast, um, Irreverend, I've come across many, many people who sing in church choirs who have been subjected to all kinds of silliness, um, you know, bans on uh, putting their music on the floor, um, being forced to wipe down their chairs with, with disinfectants, um, you know, extreme uh, social distancing, which is really unjustifiable, um, you know, these, these kinds of things. So, so I think, I mean, clearly, clearly there is, a, there is an um, epistemic question here over this supposed evidence but then there's also the silliness that's been involved as well, uh, which clearly was unnecessary. OK, so Ken and Tim, do you stand by the church's decision to stop choirs from singing during the pandemic? Well, I think with the benefit of hindsight, we'd be in a different place and we wouldn't have made those decisions. But we don't have the benefit of hindsight in the middle of something. Uh, so we were following the advice of the scientists and the government. Uh, and it struck me that we don't have much choice at all. We had to do it. And actually, yes, I would defend it. Uh, at that very early stage, when nobody really knew much about this virus, nobody knew how, exactly how it spread or how, how, how to avoid the spread, uh, I think anything that we could do to stop or minimise the spread of that virus seems to me a, a good idea. As, you, as I said, with the benefit of hindsight, we can see that actually choirs are not the ways to spread it. Uh, and it's good that that report has finally um, put, put a nail in the coffin of that particular a fallacy. But at the time, I think it was the right thing to do. Okay. Um, I mean, I would argue that perhaps some people might say it's not about hindsight, because there were lots of scientists and lots of people loudly proclaiming this at the time too. But, so that might be seen as a bit of a cop out. But to suggest that you'd still defend this decision now. So if, we, if, for, if God forbid, we had another lockdown and the government said, uh, or the church said, look, you have to stop choirs in churches, would you defend, the, would you defend that stance? No, that wasn't, that, that wasn't what I said. I said, That's with the benefit cool. of hindsight, uh, I, if it came out now, uh, then I would I would protest loudly because the science has proved that things uh, have done different. That's not how how it spread. Um, I, I sing in an amateur choir, and it was very painful not to be able to sing for for those eighteen months. And I'm a canon at one of the cathedrals in the country here at Peterborough, uh, and it was deeply sad not to have our choir singing as they do every day during term times. Our worship was definitely uh, diminished by the absence of singing and the absence of choir. Uh, I can still remember the time when we were allowed to sing for the first time, albeit with masks on, and what a joy that was. So I'm, I'm all for choirs, absolutely. And if we can sing safely, then so much the better.